Hello and welcome to the Maths 2 component of the online BSc program on data science and programming. In this video, we are going to talk about what is an orthonormal basis. So, let us just recall first that we have defined what is an orthogonal set. So, an orthogonal set of vectors v1, v2, vk in an inner product space is a set of vectors whose elements are mutually orthogonal. That means, if you take the inner product v i comma v j where i is not equal to j, then this is 0. So, uh, we checked in the previous video that an orthogonal uh, set of vectors is linearly independent and that is why if you take a maximal orthogonal set uh, of vectors, then it is a maximal linearly independent set and we have seen before that a maximal linearly independent set is a basis. So, this is one way of getting a basis for uh, an inner product space. So, this is somewhat special if you have an inner product on your vector space, uh, this is a slightly enhanced way of getting uh, a basis. So, such a basis was called an orthogonal basis. So, what is an orthonormal set? So, we are going to use these two terms an orthonormal set and a basis and put them together and we will get an orthogonal orthonormal basis. So, an orthonormal set of vectors in an inner product space is an orthogonal set of vectors. So, that means, uh, the inner product of uh, uh, v i and v j is 0 for all i naught equal to j such that the norm of each vector of the set is 1. So, let us recall that if you have an inner product, it automatically gives you a norm that is if you have a vector v and uh, you take the inner product of v comma v, then uh, that is a positive number non negative number and if you take its square root that gives you the norm. So, that is defined as the norm of the vector. So, explicitly what this means is if you have a set v 1 v 2 v k, then S is an orthonormal set of vectors if the inner product of v i and v j is 0 for i and j in i 1 through k and i is not equal to j and the norm of v i is 1. So, just to explicitly say that norm of v i is 1 is the same as saying that uh, inner product of v i comma v i is equal to 1. Uh, so, uh, here of course, we do not take square root because a square root of 1 is 1. So, we know that if the norm, norm is 1 this is the same as saying the inner product is 1. Okay. So, as an example let us consider R 4 with the usual inner product that is the dot product. So, then the set minus 1 by root 3 1 by root 3 1 by root 3 comma 0 2 by root 42 1 by root 42 1 by root 42 6 by root 42 and 2 thirds 0 2 thirds minus 1 third is an orthonormal set of vectors. So, uh, this example uh, we have sort of uh, seen a similar example before and the idea is here we have made them all into a norm we have made all of them to have norm 1. So, if you take the norm, so norm of the first uh, uh, vector is uh, so this is the usual inner product. So, the norm is just given by taking each component squaring it and adding it up. So, that gives us 1 third plus 1 third plus 1 third which is 1. So, similarly here if you take the uh, norm that is going to give you 4 by 42 plus uh, 1 by 42 plus 1 by 42 plus 36 by 42 which is indeed 1 and similarly over here uh, the norm is going to be given by uh, 2 third square plus 2 third square plus minus 1 third square that is uh, 4 by 9 plus uh, 4 by 9 plus 1 by 9 which is 1. So, all these have norm 1 and um, uh, uh, you can check that the inner product is, is 0 if you take uh, two different vectors. So, for that since all of them have the same uh, denominator, you can ignore the denominator and, and take uh, uh, take the inner product and you can see clearly that the norm is indeed 0 uh, sorry the inner product is indeed 0. Okay. So, I hope uh, it is clear what is an orthonormal set. It is just an orthogonal set with the additional property that the norms of each of the vectors in that set is 1. Okay. So, now what is an orthonormal basis? So, we know what is an orthonormal set. Uh, so, now uh, an orthonormal set which forms a basis is an orthonormal basis. So, this is similar to what we did saw for the uh, orthogonal basis uh, namely an orthogonal basis was one where it was an orthogonal set and it was a basis. So, here an orthonormal basis is one where it is an uh, it is a basis and it is an orthonormal set. So, equivalently an orthonormal basis is an orthogonal basis uh, where the norm of each vector is 1. 
right. So, because an orthogonal set is orthonormal set is nothing but, but an orthogonal set where each vector has norm 1 and orthonormal basis in particular is an orthogonal basis uh, where each L vector has norm 1. So, equivalently an orthonormal basis is a maximal orthonormal set. So, just to make it clear what we mean by that, that means this set is an orthonormal set and there is no set which is bigger than this which properly contains the, uh, this set and which is also an orthonormal set. So, this is the largest possible orthonormal set you can uh, you can get. You cannot expand this set further uh, and retain the property of being orthonormal. So, here is an example the standard basis with respect to the usual inner product forms an orthonormal basis. Uh, maybe let us check that quickly uh, before going ahead. Uh, so, I have the vectors E i. So, we already know that if you take E i comma E j, then this is right and i is not equal to j right. Then this inner product is going to be. So, if you work this out 0 times 0 plus 0 times 0 all the way. So, there is a lot of zeros and then when you come to the ith place you will get a 0 oh sorry a 1 times 0 and when you come to the jth place you will get a 0 times 1. This is if uh, i is larger than sorry less than j then you get this if i is uh, larger than j then the 0 times 1 comes first and the 1 times 0 comes next. Either way the point is uh, you get this to be 0. So, this inner product is 0 and the norm of E i so, that is E i comma E i. So, uh, well square root of this. So, then uh, if you do the same computation you get 0 times 0 plus so bunch of zeros and then in the ith place there is 1 uh, in each component. So, 1 times 1 and then again zeros. So, this gives you uh, ah, I should have square root of this. So, which is uh, square root of 1 and of course, when we say square root and we are talking about norms we always take the positive square root. So, this is again 1. So, this is an example of an orthonormal basis. It is an orthogonal basis we well we already know it is a basis it is an orthogonal set that is that is what we checked uh, over here. So, here we checked it is orthogonal and here we checked it is orthonormal. Okay, Let us do another example. So, consider R 3 with the usual inner product and the set uh, 1 third 1 2 2, 1 third minus 2 minus 1 2 and 1 third 2 minus 2 1. Then this set uh, which we have called beta is an orthonormal basis. So, let us uh, check this. So, let us look at the norms first. So, let us give these names. So, let us call this let us call the first vector v 1. So, we have v 1, v 2 and v 3. So, the norm of v 1 is uh, uh, square root of. Uh, so, typically you know if you want to if you want to check that uh, something has norm 1 then it is enough to check that its square is 1 right. So, instead of checking that uh, norm v 1 is 1 I will be checking norm of v 1 squared is 1. So, norm of v 1 squared is just the inner product of v 1 with itself which we can compute easily. So, this is uh, uh, 1 third uh, 1 2 2 uh, 1 third 1 2 2 and that is uh, 1 by 9 times uh, 1 times 1 plus 2 times 2 plus 2 times 2 uh, which is uh, 1 plus 4 plus 4. So, 9 by 9 which is 1. Okay. The same the same uh, things would happen if you take v 2 norm of v 2 which is uh, uh, 1 third minus 2 comma minus 1 comma 2 1 third minus 2 comma minus 1 comma 2. So, this is giving us 1 by 9 times uh, uh, minus 2 times uh, minus 2 plus minus 1 times minus 1 plus 2 times 2 uh, which is uh, 9 by 9 which is 1. Uh, maybe I leave norm v 3 squared uh, to you. So, check that this is 1 and then we are left with these 3 inner products. So, let us check v 1 v 2 what is the inner product. So, we have 1 third 1 comma 2 comma 2 
and one third minus two comma minus one comma two. So again, the tip here is, uh, if you want to check that the inner product is zero, then these constants you can remove out and check for the uh, term inside, which if it uh, is a better term. So in this case, for example, you have integers, then uh, you would rather check that. So in this case, you get one by nine times now one times minus two uh, plus two times minus one uh, plus two times two. So that gives us a minus two minus two plus four. So that's zero. Okay, I'll again encourage you to check the other other terms. So this shows that this is an orthonormal basis. Okay, uh, why is it a basis? We have checked here that this is an orthonormal set, right? But the reason it's a basis is because it's a maximal orthonormal set, meaning uh, this is a set of um, size three, and uh, we already know it's a linearly independent set because if it's an orthonormal normal set, it's in particular an orthogonal set which we have checked is linearly independent. So this is a so yeah. So I should end this by saying once you finish this checking, this will so this part will show, and along with V three, will show uh, that the norms are one. This part if you finish. So, check also that v 1, v 3 is v 2, v 3 is 0. This will uh, all together will show that it is orthogonal and then uh, the cardinality of beta is 3 and beta is uh, linearly independent right because it is orthogonal uh, and we know that uh, dimension of R 3 is 3. So, that implies that uh, beta is a an orthonormal basis. Yeah, so because the sizes match, right? So you have a linearly independent set of size which is equal to the dimension of the vector space. Uh, that's why it's a basis. So in particular, it's an orthonormal basis in this case. Great. So we have. Uh, I hope this gives you a window into how to check something is a basis. Sometimes you happen to not know an explicit basis but you know the dimension of the space in consideration. So, you can check that something is a basis. So, let us uh, talk about obtaining orthonormal sets from orthogonal sets. So, suppose uh, you have a inner product space uh, and inner product space and if gamma is a set v 1, v 2, v k which is orthogonal. So, it is an orthogonal set of vectors. So, then we can obtain an orthonormal set of vectors which uh, let us call it beta from gamma by the following procedure. You take each of these vectors and divide it by its norm. Then we are claiming that this is an orthonormal set. So, uh, why is it an orthonormal set? Uh, so, the reason is because this is exactly what we did in the previous uh, example. We each of those vectors was divided by its norm which made it orthonormal and the orthogonality was uh, evident already from just the integer part. So, here also that is what is happening. Uh, so, here we have that uh, v 1, uh, v 2 is, so let us say v i, v j is 0. So, this will imply that uh, v i by norm v i comma v j by norm v j uh, is 0. And uh, so, this is this is orthogonal. So, this new set is orthogonal beta. So, the only thing that is remaining to check is what is the norm. So, if you take the norm of uh, v i by norm v i, well constants come out of the norm. So, you get 1 by norm v i times norm v i which is 1. Okay. So, that is why this is an orthonormal set. Okay. So, let us consider R 2 with the usual in the product and the orthogonal basis uh, gamma uh, 1 third comma minus 3 comma 1. Uh, so, we can make this uh, into an orthonormal basis by looking at uh, the norms of each of these vectors and then dividing by that term. So, the norm of both of these vectors turn out to be uh, root 10. So, if you do 1 by root 10 times 1 comma 3 and then 1 by root 10 comma time 1 by root 10 times minus 3 comma 1, this is an orthonormal basis uh, for R 2. So, the fact that it is an orthogonal set uh, is, uh, is already because gamma was orthogonal. The fact that it is an orthonormal set is because we divided by the norms. And the fact that it is a basis, well gamma was already a basis. Uh, so, from there it follows this is a basis or the fact that R 2 is of dimension 2 and um, 
uh, this is a orthonormal set of uh, size 2. So, it must be linearly independent. So, linearly independent of size 2 which tells you it is a basis. Okay. So, uh, maybe let me uh, just write that again here since it got lost out. So, uh, here I was just saying that uh, v i comma v j is 0 uh, implies uh, v i comma norm v i comma v j divided by norm v j. So, this is 1 by norm v i times norm v j times the inner product of v i comma v j which is 0. So, uh, from here we get that the existing set is orthogonal. Uh, sorry the new set is orthogonal and norm of v i by norm v i uh, we can take the uh, norm out. So, this gives us 1. Okay. So, that is what uh, that is that is why uh, the statement holds true and, and uh, the example uh, uh, tells you if you do not understand what I have written here tells you why these these things work. So, work out the example for yourself. So, why are orthonormal bases important? This is sort of the punch line of, of uh, what we are doing. So, suppose gamma is, is v 1 v 2 v n and this is an orthonormal basis of an inner product space v and suppose you have a vector v inside capital V. Well, we, al we already know because it is a basis that you can write little v as c 1 v 1 plus c 2 v 2 plus c n v n. Why is that? Because remember that a basis is in particular a spanning set. right? A basis is a spanning set which means every uh, vector is, uh, is a linear combination of the basis vectors and in fact, for a basis it is a unique linear combination. So, you there are unique c 1, c 2, c n such that little v c 1 v 1 plus c 2 v 2 plus c n v n. So, this is a general statement for any basis. Now, what is the importance of it uh, being an inner product space and with an orthonormal basis? So, how do we find C 1, C 2, C n? For any basis, this means writing a system of linear equations and solving it. Right? So, that is how I typically uh, solve for C 1, C 2, C n. You, you uh, write your v and then you write your v 1, v 2, v n and then you solve these equations. But since gamma is orthonormal, we can use the inner product and compute C i is v comma inner product of v comma v i. So, how do I do that? Let me quickly uh, show you why that is true. So, let us compute what is inner product of v comma v i. So, if you compute what is inner product of v comma v i, I substitute c 1 v 1 plus c 2 v 2 plus c i v i plus c n v n and then inner product with respect with v i. Well, we know that the inner product is a linear uh, uh, in each variable, which means that I can write this as uh, c 1 times inner product of v 1 comma v i plus c 2 times inner product of v 1 v 2 comma v i all the way up to uh, then we have plus c i times inner product of uh, v i comma v i plus um, c n inner product of v n comma v i. Right, this is what we get, but now we know that this is an orthonormal basis. So, because it is an orthonormal basis, first of all it is orthogonal. So, other than the v i comma v i term, every other term is going to be 0. So, this term will remain and all these terms are 0. Right. So, this is I can just write this as c i times v i comma v i. Okay. So, this we have used here that it is orthogonal, but now we also know it is orthonormal because it is ortho orthonormal this is uh, we can rewrite this as c i times norm v i squared and norm v i we know is 1. So, this is just c i this is where we are using the fact that we have an orthonormal basis. So, what did we get? We got that the inner product of v and v i is equal to c i. So, this is uh, a very um, easy way of, of saying what are the coefficients which which come into this linear combination which gives you v. How do we find c 1, c 2, c n? The answer is each c i is take the inner product of v with v i that is your c i. Okay, Let us do an example. We saw this orthonormal basis for r 2 earlier. 
So, write 2 comma 5 as a linear combination in terms of these basis vectors. So, if you take 2 comma 5, uh, let us write this as C 1 times 1 by root 10, 1 comma 3 plus C 2 times 1 by root 10 uh, minus 3 comma 1. Uh, well, we just saw what is C 1? C 1 is the inner product of um, uh, v comma uh, v 1. So, here v 1 is 1 by root 10 times 1 comma 3 which is uh, you can pull out the constant. So, 1 by root 10 and then the remaining things you take the inner product. So, this is 2 times 1 plus 5 times 3. So, what does that give us? 1 by root 10 times uh, 2 plus uh, 15, so that is 17 and then we get uh, C 2 uh, which is um, V comma uh, V 2. So, 1 by root 10 times minus 3 comma 1 uh, which gives us Mm, so, the again the 1 by root 10 comes out and we get 2 times minus 3 plus 5 times 1 which is uh, minus 6 plus 5. So, minus 1 uh, by root 10. Okay. So, this is what what uh, uh, what we obtained as the uh, coefficients. So, now if we write uh, 2 comma 5 in terms of these vectors we get 2 comma 5 is uh, 17 by root 10 times v 1 plus minus 1 by root 10 times v 2. So, which if you write out completely so 17 times root 10 times 1 by root 10 times 1 third oh sorry 1 comma 3 plus uh, or rather minus uh, 1 by root 10 uh, times uh, 1 by root 10 times minus 3 comma 1 and you can check actually that this this is indeed going to work uh, if you want we can do that quickly this is 17 by 10 1 comma 3 minus uh, 1 by 10 uh, minus 3 comma 1 and if you if you work this out the first entry is 17 by 10 minus minus 3 by 10. So, 17 by 10 plus 3 by 10 so 20 by 10 which is giving you 2 and then the second entry is 51 by 10 minus 1 by 10 which is giving you 5. So, this shows that uh, indeed what the equation we wrote down is correct. Uh, this would have been maybe slightly harder if we did not have this uh, knowledge that this is an orthonormal basis. Uh, so, I hope in this video you have uh, figured out what uh, I mean you have understood the uh, main point. The main point is that uh, we define something called an orthonormal basis that is an orthogonal basis in which each vector has uh, norm 1 and the crux of the uh, uh, video is that every vector which you can write as a linear combination of the orthonormal basis, uh, the coefficients of, of uh, in that linear combination C 1, C 2, C n are essentially are equal to the inner product of the vector v with the corresponding uh, um, uh, basis vector v i yeah, that that is the main point. Okay. So, I guess that finishes this video. Thank you.